Today we'll be talking about The Crucible by Arthur Miller. We'll cover summary, themes, and if you stay until the very end of this video, I'll direct you to additional resources like quote banks, sample essay topics, and a sample essay topic breakdown so that you can go away and practice with. Throughout this video, I'll be connecting the ideas to real life modern examples so that you can actually get a tangible sense of why you're studying this text, which is what's important at the end of the day. After all, you shouldn't just be studying English for the sake of studying English. You should be understanding why it's actually relevant for you. And that actually makes English a whole lot easier and a whole lot more interesting. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Lisa. I used to be a shoddy English student turned A plus English student turned pharmacist, turned entrepreneur. So on this channel, we talk about all things related to get you that A plus in English and life advice to help you get into adulthood to be the best version of yourself. So let's get started. Summary. Arthur Miller's 1953 realist play is based on the historical events of the 1692 Salem witch hunts. Although partially fictionalized, it depicts the very real consequences of false accusations based on blind religious faith, as Miller displays the dangers of such baseless rumors. However, the play was written during another type of witch hunt. McCarthyism in 1950s America. This was a political movement in which Senator Joseph McCarthy attempted to control the spread of communism by placing any communist sympathizers on a blacklist. This resulted in widespread fear of communist influences and a political hunt similar to the Salem witch trials began as civilians attempted to escape their own charges by accusing other innocent individuals of treason. Thus, given the historical context of the time, Miller uses the crucible as an allegorical warning for the audience against the dangers of McCarthyism in 1950s America. Some of these concepts will be unpacked in this video later, but it's really important at this point in time for you to understand the key notions of hysteria, accusations, and blind faith. These are the fundamental ideas which The Crucible is based on, and you can connect a lot of those ideas to modern events today. Think about the development of technology and how widespread it's become. Although technology has been amazing for us, it also has led to a number of ramifications that we never had to previously dealt with. One of these issues is false allegations and social rumors. Think about fake news or how hysterical people can be when they go into a rabbit hole of a particular topic that might be completely removed from what society deems as normal. I might be going out on a limb here, but a really good example is COVID and whether or not COVID is just a major hoax designed by the government. And you can connect that to vaccinations and whether or not vaccinations is just a government ploy. I could go into a host of other topics as well, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of context as to why this text is important for you to understand because it really helps you get a better picture of the real world. Not to mention the anonymity of technology has enabled individuals to start modern day witch hunts as a nameless, faceless user behind the comfort and security of their screens. So these witch hunts happen today as well, just in a different form. Let's now move into themes. Mass hysteria. Mass hysteria is one of the most significant themes of the play, as Miller depicts the entire town of Salem engulfed by the superstition of witchcraft and devil worship. The community-wide fear of consorting with the devil is shown to overwhelm any kind of rational thought. As one rumor created by Abigail and the girls leads to dozens of incarcerations and executions in a matter of days, the crucible depicts the perverse manifestation of panic that can occur from unsubstantiated fear. By the way, if there are any pieces of vocabulary that you see on screen, make sure that you write it down, get familiarized with it and save it for later. Cause that's a tip for you. It will probably be good for your essays. Miller uses this illustration of hysteria to show the effects of a strictly repressive Puritan society. Although some residents of Salem manipulate the wish hunt for their own benefit, such as Abigail, the majority of townspeople are launched into the terror-filled fever of their genuine belief that the devil is running amok in Salem. The strict theocracy of the town thus exacerbates the crisis as joining the accusatory crowd becomes a religious necessity, a virtuous plane of heavenly combat between Lucifer and the Lord. As such, 
The play demonstrates how uncontrolled religious fervor can lead to the collective indoctrination of black mischief, where panic clouds all reason. I've got a question for you to think about now. When has there been a time when religion has led people to completely ignore logic? Might be controversial, but something to think about. Judgment. Judgment in the crucible encompasses three meanings, the legal, personal, and spiritual. The legal judgment in the play is depicted as superficial, mainly illustrated through the characters of Hathorne and Danforth. The theocratical Salem court does not carry out real justice due to its dogmatic focus on reputation. In other words, reputation is more important to them than justice. This is depicted by Danforth's stubborn refusal to free the innocent's accused due to his belief that it would lead to a tainted esteem of the court. Thus, Miller suggests that the more important judgment is personal, as exemplified by the character of Proctor. Believing himself to be a sinner against his own version of moral conduct, Proctor throughout the play shows limitless remorse and self-hatred for the hurt he has caused Elizabeth by his affair with Abigail. Miller shows the importance of forgiveness through self-judgment, as Elizabeth assures Proctor that there is no higher judge under heaven than Proctor himself, and he ultimately is able to forgive himself and see the shred of goodness within him by the end of the play. Furthermore, the Crucible depicts the town of Salem overcome by the fear of God's judgment, or what Proctor calls God's icy wind. Quick tip for you here as well. God's icy wind, I mean, it could be quite literal because God has all the powers, but in my mind, as I read this, we're using literary devices and it's a type of metaphor. And I want you to think about what does God's icy wind stand for? What does it mean? If you're not sure, then I've got a video on meta language to help you understand further. This might also be a good time for me to tell you about my study guide, The Crucible. If you're learning a lot here and you find that you want to learn more or that you love the style of teaching that you're getting here, then I think that my study guide, as written with one of my tutors, Jamie, will be incredibly helpful for you. In there, we detail all the things we cover here, but then some more, including symbols, quotes, essay topics, and most importantly, we actually all write five full essay topics, all annotated for you, so you can enter the mind of a high achiever and know exactly what you need to do in order for you to do just as well in your own studies. Let's head back to the themes. The events of the play unfold due to the town's collective fear of the higher power of an almighty God. As Hale proclaims, before the laws of God, we are as swine. Miller showcases the extent of the fearsome power of theocracy in circumstances of confusion and hysteria. Accusation. The events of Salem witch trials detail various types of accusation. Although all are disguised as the dispelling of the witchcraft, the false accusations depicted in the play are carried out with a range of different motives. For example, Abigail's accusation of Elizabeth as a witch is described to derive from a whore's vengeance due to her passionate jealousy of Elizabeth's position as Proctor's wife, and Abigail's wish to take her place. Similarly, Rebecca Nurse's charge of murdering Goody Putnam's babies is due to Putnam's resentment and jealousy of her numerous children, while they themselves have lost babies before they could be baptised. In contrast to this, the accusation of Martha Corey, Guile's wife, of witchcraft is motivated by Walcott's desire for revenge, as he resents her for the unhealthy pig he bought from her five years ago. Thus. His actions are calculative rather than passionate, a cruel attempt to get his money back. In his employment of the play as a historical allegory, this depiction of the blind following of rampant accusations depicted in The Crucible represents the similarly irrational proceedings of the McCarthy trials, many of which were carried out without substantial evidence. Lastly, let's talk about honor and integrity. Honor is one of the most prominent themes in the play, as the majority of the characters strive to maintain their reputations in society. Miller depicts a community in which private and public characters are one and the same, and the consequences of the obsessive desire to uphold the esteem of their name. For example, 
although Proctor has the chance to undermine the girl's accusations by revealing Abigail as a whore, he does not do so in order to protect his good name from being tarnished. Likewise, Paris at the beginning of the play threatens Abigail and the girls due to his fear that hints of witchcraft will threaten his already precarious reputation in the church and banish him from the culprit. Furthermore, the judges of Salem do not accept any evidence that could be free of innocent accused as they uphold a false reputation to honour the Puritan church. Despite this, Miller shows the importance of prioritizing personal honor over public reputation through the character of Proctor, as he ultimately makes the valiant decision in Act 4 to refrain from signing lies and thus uphold his name, he is able to redeem himself from the previous sins and is able to die with righteousness. I want you to think about your reputation or potentially the reputation of others around you, your friends, your family. Has there ever been a time when you'd have to protect your reputation or protect the reputation of others? Why is reputation important to so many of us? It's some food for thought. If you're finding that my advice is really resonating with you, then I just wanted to take this moment to show you some extra resources that I think will also help. I've got a blog post that covers more of what we talk about today, including themes, quote banks, sample essay topics for you to go away and practice with. I'll have the link here in the card for you and in the description box as well.